What's up everyone? I got another workout for you. My name is Bryn. This is Touchstone Live Fitness. For today, I'm gonna go through a warm up, talk about the workout, and then you're gonna pause the video so you can do the workout, and then at the end, I've got the cool down for you. So, starting with the warm up, we're just gonna jog in place. Going for about 30 seconds, but I'm talking while I'm jogging, so I think we're 10 seconds in. Here we go, a few more seconds left. All right, pause on the jogging. We're gonna set up to warm up our shoulders with some what I call W's, Y's, and T's. So we're gonna slight bend in the knee, send the hips back, and then we're gonna bring our elbows out side to side, about 90 degree bend in the elbows. Nice flat back, we don't want a rounding here, so we're pulling the shoulders up. And then we're gonna go through, I feel like a puppet walking around like this. We're gonna go through 10 W's, so just rotating the palms up. If you feel crunching in your shoulders, you can always modify maybe like a more narrower, feels good. You don't need to like swing through a huge range of motion here. Just whatever feels good for you. Go on for 10 of them. And then we'll go for Y's. If you need to take a break, shake it off before we bend back over. Wise, we're gonna go palms facing each other, thumbs up, reaching overhead, going for 10 of those. Got three more. Nice, you can shake it off again. Next one, we're going for 10 T's. So same bent over position, keeping that tension in your hips, hamstrings, pulling shoulders down, and we're gonna go for T's, so just like flies, outside to side. We wanna have control over doing these, we don't wanna just like flap and fly away. So minor pause at the top, minor pause at the bottom. Is that five? I'm not good at counting and talking. Let's go one more. Nice, all right, right into butt kickers. Just like a jog, but this time, literally try to kick your butt. All right. We're gonna warm up our shoulders and core a little bit more. We're gonna go for some scapular push-ups. So, coming down on the ground. Getting into our plank position, or you can do it from knees. But we're gonna think about our shoulder blades on the, our back. <laughs> we're gonna try to spread them apart and push them together. So we're not moving very far on the scapular push-up. Pinching the shoulder blades to go down. Maybe you go down only a couple inches. And then spreading them apart to come back up. I like to call them lizard push-ups. I don't know if you've ever seen lizards. They do that like head bobbing thing. All right, just a few more. That felt like 10. I wasn't counting very well. Hopefully you're somewhere around 10. All right, next, high knees. Jogging in place, but getting those knees up nice and high. Back down on the ground, warming up our core a little bit more. We're gonna go for hollow rocks. So we're laying on the ground, face up. We are going to become a banana. So we're tucking our hips, pressing that lower back to the floor. No gap anymore. We're going arms out overhead, legs extended, and you wanna rock. If this is way too much, as it can be. I know I definitely struggle keeping the banana position. You can bring your arms in and try to rock that way. You can bring one knee in, arm somewhere out here. Let's go on for 10. Really trying to keep that hip tuck and rounding. 
through your whole body. All right, 10 of those. Next, we got two more warm up movements. We're gonna go for 30 jumping jacks. I think I'm at 20. And 30, all right. And last but not least, one for those inchworms. If you watched the other video, I just love inchworms. They're a great warm up. So, it's like bending the knees, bending forward, walking those hands out, getting core and shoulders nice and ready for this workout, and coming on back. Going for 10. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight, nine, and ten. All right. Should be feeling nice and warm now for the workout. We've got a 10 minute workout. So set your timer for 10 minutes. You're gonna get through as many rounds as you can of these three movements. We're doing jump rope single unders, so the rope is gonna pass under your feet just one time, so single unders. We've got an elbow plank and then wall walks. So the reps, every time you get there, you're gonna do 50 single unders or 50 jump ropes. And you're gonna go for a one minute elbow plank and then five wall walks. And that's one round, you're gonna keep going through it until 10 minutes is up. Maybe you get four rounds, maybe you do three rounds. It's gonna be different for everyone, depending on your pace. So, if you got a jump rope, we're gonna use that for the single unders. And we're just working on coordination, timing, breathing, jumping, where the rope passes under your feet one time so you get the 50 jumps. If you do not have a rope, no worries, you got options. So, you can just jump in place. You can work on timing by using your hands to touch your hips at the top of the jump, which is Normally when you're at the top of the jump, that's when the rope is passing beneath your feet. So you can work on timing just by tapping your hips. Or you can go for a little lateral hop, a little back and forth. That can be fun too. Whatever has you jumping around and moving. All right. Then, you, hopefully you've got a timer going. You can see after your 50 jump ropes, maybe you're one minute into the workout already, makes it easy timing. But whatever you're at, you're gonna come on down to the ground for your elbow plank. And we're lining up our elbows underneath our shoulders. We're pushing into our full forearm here. We're rounding through our upper back, pushing those shoulder blades apart, tucking the hips under, keeping them in line with our neck, head, shoulders. We don't want, you know, a little high butt version and definitely don't want the sagging in the lower back. So keeping tension by tucking the hips under, pushing through our heels, Hanging out for that minute. You can always go for knee plank. That's cool too. Or you could go for like a hand elevated plank. Um, maybe use a stool or something and get your hands up a little higher. That's cool too. And the last movement, we've got wall walks. So for a wall walk, you need a wall or a door or something sturdy for your feet to go up. You're gonna line up in a plank with your feet against the wall with control. You're going to walk your feet up that wall while walking your hands in closer to where you feel comfortable. Maybe your chest gets all the way to the wall. Maybe you stop at a certain point and then you walk them back down. As you go through these, same position with the plank where we're, and the hollow body where we're tucking the hips under and pushing through the shoulders. Same thing as you go up the wall. You don't want to start arching your back as you get up that wall because then you're going to be disconnected from your top half of your body and your bottom half of your body. 
If wall walks are like, whoa, that's, that's a lot. I don't want to do that. But you got options. You can get another bench, stool, couch, whatever. Get your feet up on there. Start in that plank position with your feet elevated. And then you can walk in your chest close to the stool as you bend your knees, trying to get your hips over your shoulders and your head. You can walk back out that way. Or you can do what we did in the warm up with the inchworms, that's cool too. So you can start standing, bend over, walk out to the plank, and then walk on back for your wall walks. You've got options. All right, now it's time to pause the video, get through the workout, and come back for the cool down. All right, the cool down. You made it through 10 minutes. The cool down is my favorite part. Get the stretch and chill out. So, hopefully you've caught your breath a little bit. We're gonna go for a forward fold here, but first we're gonna clasp our hands behind our back. You can let the palms come out wide. They don't need to be glued together, that's cool. You're just gonna go for a fold, slight bend in the knees if that feels good. And if you have it, let your hands, you know, fall wherever they go. If you can straighten them and let them hang forward, that's cool. If they're just here, try to open up through your chest a little bit more. That's good too. I'm gonna get here and just breathe though. In through the nose. Let it out your mouth. Nice. We'll slowly roll it up, bring those arms back. Here we go. All right, we'll make our way down to the ground. We're gonna sit up nice and tall. Go left leg stays out straight, toes pointed up. We're gonna bring our right knee in and put our right foot over our left leg. We're setting up for a twist. So you can hug that right knee with your left arm. Sitting up nice and tall here, no crouchy backs. So sitting up nice and tall and slowly twist open to the right. Trying to send breath into your belly area. Sitting up nice and tall before you twist even more. Nice and slowly let it go. Right leg goes out, left leg comes in this time. Grabbing it with the right elbow. You're sitting up nice and tall again, and then twisting to the left. Again, keeping that back nice and straight, no crouching this way. Sit up tall and twist. Center, nice. Now you can just come to a comfortable seat. Maybe you're cross-legged, that's cool. We're gonna go for eagle arms. So we're gonna do right hand over your left arm, or right arm over your left arm. If you have this twist, that's cool. Otherwise, you're gonna go for a bear hug with your right arm on top. I'm probably crunching the mic right now, so I'm sorry if that sounds terrible. But if you're here in the eagle arms, hands are touching, or rolling shoulders down away from your ears, nice long neck. We're lifting the elbows up and then bringing the hands away from your face. Sending nice deep breaths into the shoulder blade region. And same thing if you're in the bear hug, you can dome through the upper back again, stretch and push while giving yourself a nice big hug. All right, go ahead and let that go. Switch to the other side. So left or right arm on bottom, left arm on top. Same thing, switch arms if you're in the bear hug to which arm is on top. Bringing those shoulders away from your ears. Elbows come up just slightly and hands away from your face.
Nice, slowly unravel there. We're going to scoot forward onto hands and knees. We'll walk the knees back a little bit and then walk the hands forward for puppy pose. You should feel everything opening up through your chest, armpit area, maybe your triceps, maybe even a little bit of an ab stretch. And then we're going to walk the hands back up and into my favorite stretch. I don't know if it's even a stretch. I guess it's kind of a stretch, but child's pose. Let's go toes together, knees nice and wide, sending the hips back, reaching those arms forward, forehead to the mat if you're there, or you can use your hands, elevate it a little bit, but it feels really good to rest your head down. Maybe you get a pillow under there, whatever feels good. Once you're settled, we're gonna go for those three nice deep breaths in through the nose, filling up your whole back. And exhaling out of your mouth. Let's do two more just like that, trying to make your exhale a little longer than your inhale. Nice, one more, just like that. All right. There it is, come on up. Pat yourself on the back. You guys crushed it. Hope to see you again.